All right, it is 701. I'm going to call the regular meeting of the Board of Selectmen to order. Um, and I'm going to ask for a motion to recess the regular meeting of the Board of Selectmen to adjourn our public hearing on uh, to, I'm sorry, convene our public hearing on the proper fire department's budget request. Um, can I have a motion to recess? I'll make a motion. We recess our regular um, Board of Selectmen meeting. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We are in recess at 701. Um, for the members of the general public, we have two public hearings that are noticed this evening on top of our regular uh, Board of Selectmen's agenda. And we're gonna be taking some things out of order on the, the Selectmen's agenda. So things are gonna seem a little, a little jumbled, but there actually is a, a method here. Um, so we're about to, to convene the public hearing on the um, Robert Fire Department's budget submission. Um, it's a little bit different from the process that the town budget follows. It largely mirrors that process. Um, so we're gonna hear their uh, public comment on the proper fire department budget this evening. And two weeks from tonight, we will actually be voting on their uh, budget recommendation before it goes on to the Board of Finance. Um, so that's what's about to happen now. So with that, I'm gonna convene the public hearing on the proper fire department's budget request. It is 7.02 PM. Are there any members of the public who would like to address the board? Please provide your name and your address. Are there any members of the public here present who would like to address members of the board? Are there any members here present who would like to address the board? Seeing none, are there any members of the public online that would like to address the board of select? Is there anyone online? Seeing none, if there's no further public comment, um, I would ask for a motion from the Board of Selectmen to close the public hearing on the Broadwood Fire Department's budget request. Will we close the budget hearing on the Broadwood Fire Department budget request? Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Public hearing is closed at 7.03 p.m. Now gonna reconvene the regular meeting of the Board of Selectmen. We're gonna take another break in just a moment. Um, well, a couple of minutes actually for our second public hearing of the evening, but we will take care of some of the business before us uh, in the meantime. So I'll start off with the Pledge of Allegiance um, and I'm gonna recognize the Deputy First Selectman and ask her to lead us in the pledge. To the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All members of the Board of Selectmen are here present. Um, next, next thing I'd like to do um, is a really nice thing. Uh, and it, it's important for us to recognize service and commitment to the community. Um, with us this evening um, is Joe Ouellette. Um, Joe served on the East Windsor Planning and Zoning Commission for 19 years, uh, which is a remarkable contribution to the community. And I, uh, the board wanted to take the opportunity to thank Joe for two decades of service where he's provided professional uh, expertise and insight and steady leadership to uh, move the community forward in a lot of ways over a lot of time. Think of where we were in the year 2000. Think of where we are now. Joe had a hand in almost all of those decisions from an economic development perspective. We would not be as well situated as we are right now without the work of the Planning and Zoning Commission and without Joe's leadership. So the Board of Selectmen would like to offer uh, their congratulations and appreciation. We do have a plaque to commemorate his years of service. I'm gonna ask Joe to come up and I'll present it to him. The Town of East Windsor hereby presents Joseph Ouellette with this Distinguished Service Award in appreciation of your 19 years of dedicated service to the Town of East Windsor on the Planning and Zoning Commission, dated 2022. It's a little delayed, but we appreciate your service. Thank you very much. It's with mixed emotions that I had to step down to the Planning and Zoning Commission. That was truly my, my passion being part of a public servant, uh, dedicating my, my time to the community. And uh, I, I'm thankful for the 19 years that I did serve on, on the committee. And um, I, I've seen the town grow in leaps and bounds in that period, as Jason alluded to. And uh, I left 
the commission in great hands of leadership of Ann Gogan, who's the current chairwoman. And I, I continue, I, I'm so passionate about it. I continue to follow uh, what's happening in the planning uh, commission uh, online. So I, I just wish that uh, I still had an opportunity to continue, but uh, due to some conflict of my, uh, my full-time job, I had to step down. So thank you very much. Thank you for your service. All the good works that are happening in East Windsor, whether it be actually to offer uh, honest advice to me from time to time or to the Planning and Zoning Commission, he's missed, he's, his impact was felt and continues to be. And thank you for your service. Thank you. So we have a couple minutes, so we'll, we'll bang through the communications pieces. There's a couple in your packet. Um, first of all, uh, last week, I had the opportunity to speak at the North Central Connecticut Chamber of Commerce's Economic Development Breakfast. They invited leaders from the uh, four towns that they service, which is East Windsor, Enfield, Suffield, and Summers. Um, and I wanted to include for your information and for the public record, the presentation that I shared um, about the economic development activities that have happened in East Windsor in the last couple of years, and some of the things we have coming up. Um, if anybody has any questions or comments on those, I'm happy to, to add that as an agenda item at some future point. Um, we did receive a letter from the chairman of the Warehouse Point Fire District, um, who wants to revisit discussions around perceived tax discrepancies in the fire service. Um, so that'll be an agenda item at a future point. And I had the opportunity last week, last Thursday, um, for a visit from Mary Turner, and she left some gifts for everyone. Um, Mary is the first ever Miss Connecticut teen volunteer. Um, she's from right here in East Windsor. She is very passionate about um, animal abuse advocacy, and she's starting a, her own 501c3 um, called Milo's Mission. So she left her, her mission cards. Sorry and a couple of awareness bands. And there's more from the public if anybody would like them. If anybody would like to see what, what Mary is up to, she left some stuff, we can, I'll leave it out so the public can see it. Um, and I encourage you to visit her website. It's a very, very poised, very impressive young lady. Okay, um, we have time now for public participation. Um, if it should run past 715, we'll just uh, break here and continue it when we pick back up. But is there anybody here in the room uh, who would like to address the Board of Selectmen on any time? Is there anyone here in the room who would like to address the Board? Is there anyone online who would like to address the Board of Selectmen? Is there anyone online? Okay, there will be another opportunity for public participation later in the meeting. Um, so at this point in time, I would ask for a motion to recess. Make a motion to recess the meeting at 7.10. Is there a second? Second. Mo motion has been made and seconded. All in favor of recess, please say aye. 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 Opposed, we are in recess at 7.10 p.m. Feel free to be comfortable. <laughs> it is 7.15. I'm gonna call the public hearing on the small cities block grant at Park Hill to order. Um, we're first gonna invite uh, Linda Collins to say anything she needs to. Um, and then we'll take comments from the public. And then I'll take comments from those who have joined us online. Uh, Linda, would you like to make any comments? Yes. Uh, well, uh, thank you very much, Jason and whole board for supporting this project. It's meant a lot to the residents, and uh, they now have um, these beautiful showers accessible, and they need very little assistance, if any at all, which is huge and allows you to give a lot of independence to them. 
and ongoing, uh, they can get each in place with another opportunity like this. And I encourage you to come on and take a look if you'd like and just give me a call. And I have Kent Lewis here, and he is the consultant on the job and the project, and he will discuss this further. Thank you. Mr. Lewis, the floor is yours. Thanks. Up here just like um, I just have to get through. So this is a HUD grant that we got, and we have to go through certain scenarios. I'll be very short and sweet. So basically, this is a grant that we got about a year and a half ago. Um, we got delayed because of um, COVID, and we didn't want to do the construction in the middle of when COVID was really bad. So we've been a little delayed, but luckily we started construction on everything in November and we're about 90% done. We have a couple more units to clean up and we have some punch list items. So we're moving very quickly and, and getting things done. Um, we've drawn about 75% of the funds at this point. So everything is moving very smoothly with the state of um, Department of Housing as well as HUD to move things along. Um, the basic general scope of the development is there was 50 units that had tubs in their units and we basically went in and converted them to a shower unit and then we changed the floors and repainted the units. So they basically got a freshened up bathroom with a, with a shower. Um, there were some units, about 50% of those units that had asbestos tiles, so we abated those. So now that basically all those units are um, asbestos free, which is great for maintenance in the long term um, on, those, on those units. Um, we, as I said before, we still have some miscellaneous punch lists. We've had a few change orders, but mostly just odd construction. That development was under three, three different phases, three different time periods. Um, some cases they ran plumbing outside of studs underneath the tub, sometimes they were in it. So we had to, we had to do a few little things, but for the most part, we're well within budget. We're looking at um, expanding and we got approval from the state to change one of the bathrooms in, in the community room to put a shower in there to make it easier accessible when if the power's out and people are staying in the community room or if there's an aide that needs to help somebody to use that bathroom with a shower in it. So um, that's pretty much the, you know, the, the total grant was $650,000. And, you know, we're gonna, we plan to be done probably in the next six to eight weeks is my guess. So um, then we'll be, we'll be done and out of your hair. So um, that's everything I had to say. If there's any questions or anybody has any, any information about the grant, it's great and let me know. So. Thank you. What what bathroom is the shower in the community room going to be? Is that the one in the back of your office or one of the two in the front? Door? In the front, as you walk in the front door, yeah. it would be the first bathroom on your right. Huh? Oh, <laughs> Why didn't we think to do that originally? That's a great um, idea. With the community hall having a generator and uh, the people shelter in place at North Hill. Uh, when we can, uh, that, that's a huge plus. Yep. Nice. And and part of the reason we did that too, that wasn't on the original sc right. scope, which is why I need, we needed to get special approvals for it, is that there was one unit that we can't do because the, the resident in there is um, very ill. And we just, we, we they're originally going to be at the beginning of schedule. We waited the whole four months and they're still not doing very well. And we just, we just don't want to go in and, and tear up their bathroom while they're still sick. So and because of COVID, we can't return the shower. <laughs> so we've decided that this would be a good use of money. We have enough contingency and the mayor supported us and we're moving forward. So for Slackman, sorry, for us, <laughs> so, Let's flip a coin, it sounds right. <laughs> um, are there any comments on the uh, community development block grants for Park Hill? Any comments from members of the public? Are there any comments from members of the public? Are there any comments from anybody who's joined us online? Any comments from anyone online? Seeing none, I'd ask for a motion to close the public hearing. <laughs> All moved. All seconded. Moved and seconded. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Nice. Public hearing is closed at 7.20 p.m. <laughs> um, we'll now return to the regular call of the agenda. Um, Can we remind everyone to put their phones on silent. <laughs> let's let's um 
Well, it doesn't matter. We'll see if I can get into next. Um, 7A, Board of Selectmen regular meeting minutes from February 3rd, 2020. Move to approve the regular meeting minutes from the Board of Selectmen from February 3rd, 2022. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any others? Any corrections? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried unanimously. Uh, February, the February 3rd, 2022 Board of Selectmen, Board of Education, public uh, budget public hearing minutes. Move to approve the Board of Selectmen, Board of Education budget public hearing uh, minutes from February 3rd, 2022. Is there a second? Second. Any correction? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Okay. Special meeting uh, budget workshop presentations from February 15th, 2022. To approve the special meeting budget workshop minutes from February 15th, 2022. Is there a second? Any corrections? All in favor? Aye. Aye. The Board of Selectmen special meeting budget workshop presentations from February 17th, 2022. I move to approve the special meeting budget workshop minutes from February 17th, 2022. Is there a second? second? Any discussion or corrections? All in favor? Aye. Aye. The February 17th regular meeting of the Board of Selectmen meeting minutes. I move to approve the regular meeting minutes from February 17th, 2022. Is there a second? Second. Any corrections? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Board of Selectmen special meeting for budget workshop presentations on February 22nd, 2022. Move to approve the special meeting budget workshop minutes from February 22nd, 2022. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, any corrections? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, three in favor, one abstention. All right, we're on to agenda item 8C. Um, Sharon Tripp uh, has asked to be appointed to the Housing Authority. Um, she would be taking the seat vacated by Betsy Laborious's appointment to the Board of Education. Her application is in your packet, as is the term she will be filling. Make the motion that we appoint Sharon Tripp to the Housing Authority, a regular member for a term expiring October 1, 2026. Um, <laughs> is there a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, okay, so the next item is 9E, discussion of, the, the, of a flag flying policy for the town. Um, this is something we talked about last week and um, you guys asked that I put together a draft. I've actually subsequently asked the diversity council um, for their opinion on how things should shape up before coming back with a policy here. I'm figuring since the idea originated with them, it makes sense to incorporate their, their feedback as we're going through the drafting process. So um, that's been shared with them. They're gonna work on that in their next meeting or two. And then when they have a recommendation back to us, um, we'll be able to act on it. Sounds like a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, next, we'll return to a discussion and vote on the fiscal year 22, 23 town government budget. You gonna stay back there? Um, so I will share the screen again. Okay, um, debt service is where we left off. Motion to accept the selectman's proposed budget of one million one hundred twenty-eight thousand one hundred thirty-three for debt service. Second. Any discussion? 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Capital improvements. Motion to accept the proposed nine hundred fifty thousand dollars for capital improvement. Is there a second? Second. Made and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried unanimously. Employee benefits. So this, there were two um, two changes that we alluded to earlier. One is a reduction in the DV pension employer responsibility line, um, and that's based on our, our new actuarial uh, number. And then th there was also a reduction in our health insurance line, um, which was a result of actually the good work done out of Amy's office um, to do a, an employee census to figure out um, if there was in fact room to reduce there and there was. So that saved us another $100,000. Um, those are the only changes so far we've talked about in this line. Does anybody have any other subcategories that they'd like to talk about? What's the total now? 3,460,562. Jason, could you give us the um, target figures for those two lines? Yeah, Thank so uh, the DB pension employer responsibility went from 710,178 down to 651 flat. Okay, and then health and life insurance went from 160, 1,675,170 down to 1,575,170. It's actually lower than the current year. Uh, the department total is 3,465,62. Three million four sixty five sixty two. That's on employee benefits. Mm -hmm. That's the number with the adjustments for the health insurance and the pension. Oh, that's different. Yes, yes. Three four six What's that difference, Jason? Mm, it's a $20,000 reduction over the current year, but it's a $100,000 reduction in um, uh, health insurance between what was initially submitted when I submitted my budget in January versus what the number shows now. Um, and then in the uh, defined benefit pension employer responsibility, it's a reduction of 79178 So it's 100,000 and 71,000. Mm -hmm. We have the new percentage. Uh, it's a 0.65% decrease. Yeah. Yep. And it's a big budget, too. Yeah. Thanks. And that's because we took the Pension came down. Pension and health insurance came down. Pension. Health insurance didn't come down. Um, the finance office did a further uh, census evaluation to figure out what our our current take was, um, and that's a safe a safe reduction to make based on what we currently have on the books. Can I have a motion to accept the event of the department? I'll move we accept employee benefits at 3,460,562. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion we accept the proposed. Nope, not yet. No. Um, <laughs> sorry, don't mean, don't mean to cut you off. No, um, okay. So we have to talk about um, the reporting secretaries, and we have to. We still have a contingency line at CDB. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> so that's what we were going to do. Oh, I thought he was doing the final. I, I 
No, it's going to be too soon. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cut it now. It's <laughs> okay. That's a big problem later. <laughs> uh, make a motion to accept the proposed 180,000 per contingency. Is there a second? Second. Eight and seconded. Any discussion? <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Okay. Now. Hey, Jerry, I'm sorry. I'm a little slow to Can we go back to debt services? I know we approved it. Yep. I don't have a problem. Um, but the tax service that I have here is the company that's presented here. So Jay moved the 94 from the lease payments in the capital improvement section up to debt service. So it became, instead of being seven, uh, seven, seven, four, four, eight, 17. No, that's our total outstanding cash. Um, no, so I had originally proposed 736,974, which was a 2% increase, but then he transferred the 94 that we're not going to need for the lease purchase payments because we paid those leases off when we did the additional appropriation last spring. Okay. So we added that to the debt service to get a new number of 816,523. By, by taking that, you call it 100,000. Um, out of the CIP line and we'll get it to debt service. It, it so allows that's hundred thousand that you say. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to get my number to my head and we won't match it. By by moving that from capital improvements to debt service, yeah. it allows it expands the debt capacity that we can take on without asking the taxpayers to shoulder more. It's already budgeted money. I'm just moving from one line to another, but um it, it pays exponentially for us to do that so that we can address some capital projects that are outstanding we need to do. And I agree with that. All right, so now let's start with the recording secretary one. Um, Amy, you did an analysis on that, uh, or you, you expanded on the analysis that had previously been done. You want to walk us through that? Um, sure. I just took all the commissions, and which we didn't share with anybody, I don't think. I just took all the commissions, um, wrote what we're paying people. Um, what the minute size documents are approximately in the length of the meeting based on the call to order and the adjournments. And um, we are all over the place. <laughs> and it looks like two are on there. Both um, elderly and historic, I think, came on our discussions tonight that I did not have on this list <laughs> when I originally had the list. But we have um, six at $50, one at 75, three at 100, and six at 125 per meeting. So that doesn't, that's the same number. So like a board of finance, if it only goes two hours, it's 125 bucks versus a P and Z, which could go three, four or more and have 12 to 35 pages is still getting that same $125. And it, we don't do it by the hour, they get paid by the meeting. So that includes coming to the meeting, taking the minutes, scribing the minutes and getting them filed with the town clerk. So um, Ruthann did an analysis of what that is in other places and came up with a scheme that if it's three hours or less, it would be 175. And if it's three hours or more, it would be, I don't know if I have that number. Yes, I do. I'm going to write it here. She did a bunch of them. So she came up with strange numbers. What used to be um, for P and Z used to be 2750. She now has 4710. But she's assuming that 25% of the meetings are at $260, where 75% are at 175. So what they're thinking is moving everybody up to 175. So for some commissions, it's a lot more than others. I don't know that we did the math to come up to what that number is. So who did that email come from to you guys? This email to us came from me. Yeah. <laughs> I sent it. You did, yeah. Right. I'm gonna pull that up so you can see what he's working on. Send the receipt. You didn't send how to arrive at the 175. 
And she came up with the one seventy four off her very cover sheet. She basically said an average for our ten hours of effort ends up being one hundred and seventy four dollars if you take um, Cromwell, Weathersfield, Enfield, South Windsor, Ellington, Windsor Lock, East Windsor, and an online survey together. It com up, comes up with an average of one hundred and seventy five dollars for an average of ten hour effort. So that's going to the meeting less than three hours and doing all the minutes and filings that need to happen. Was there, can we see that? Yeah. Was there any consideration um, to, we know that there's some boards and commissions meet for 10, 15 minutes and then they're done. I can name two off the top of my head right now. We, um, so we did not, them, I don't think that was considered at all. Well, I think it should be because somebody doing um, 15, 20 minutes worth of minutes, and I'm not selling them short because I appreciate what they're doing. So for them to get 175 versus somebody um, that takes hours and hours above the 10 hours to do our stuff, especially during the budget time, um, it doesn't seem fair and equitable. And I want to make sure whatever we do is fair and equitable to every board and commission based upon um, the efforts that they put forward. Yeah, right now we have um, four different levels, actually. We have some commissions at 50, some at 75, some at 100, and some at 125. Currently is where we have them. I do believe that, for, you know, my opinion, the, the current breakdown, you know, we look at, you know, ag and conservation and EDC and um, AHRC and, and, and veterans, I mean, those are typically shorter meetings. They don't have a really kind of a, a legal component to them, it's, you know, where Board of Selectmen, Wetlands, Planning and Zoning, Board ZBA, of Board of Finance, you know, all could possibly be minutes that end up in court or whatever. So, I mean, I would expect a higher quality set of minutes and, and I would expect to pay more for them, but the others, not interested in paying 175 for you know 15 20 minutes worth of minutes that are really really informal minutes and just kind of done because you have to you know so i guess i would say you take those four categories and figure out what do you want to move the fifty dollar to? What do you want to move the seventy five dollar to? What do you want, or do you want to move that to a different category altogether? The hundred dollars or the hundred twenty five? I mean, I think right now they're structured for the work of the meetings in most cases. Um, we do have a couple that are under an hour that get the one twenty five, um, but for the most case, most cases, the meetings that are longer are at the one twenty five. So we can move those to 175, but then then the question was that came up was when it's longer than a three hour meeting should be at, should it be at a different rate? Because obviously if it's more than three hours, you're doing more work. Those are the things that are before you right now. Before <laughs> So, so, all right, we have kind of two tiers. We have the, the BOS, EZC, Wetlands, EOL. What was your fourth one? Fourth finance. There's and, actually and ZBA as well. Um, CIP, Board of Finance, um, ZBA, Board of Selectmen, Inland Wetlands, and E and Z are 125 along with the Police Commission. Right. Um, well, I, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, the ones that are going to get us in a court um, are Board of Selectmen, Board of Finance, and the, and the land use ones. Um, so they're they're all currently at 125, right? Yes. Yeah, the average is 175. I mean, to me, those boards are what's driving this town, and those are the boards that are doing a lot. I would say move them up to 225. Um, um, this way, we don't have to worry about them having to keep track of their time on um, recording that, or you know, it took me longer today, and that kind of stuff. So, just what a flat 225 for those groups. Um, I would take the police commission 
bring them down to 125 or leave them where they're at. Um, the um, CIP. I think that could probably stay at 125. Yeah, I think um, that's a reasonable for that group. The Economic Development Commission, I would move them out. Um, out that of that 125, um, I think they're getting 75 now. Oh, so you want them to 125? No, I don't. Um, uh, AHRC, American Harris River Commission, they're paying 100. Um, in the veterans, we are interested adversity. Um, they're getting stuck with more stuff, so I'll throw them over into 125. Uh, Police Commission, I'm, I, I would say 125. Um, Don't worry about the other ones there. And then we got the Arts and the Culture of City Commission. Mm -hmm. They've got to take under consideration Arts and Culture. Yeah, and then Al Dewey and Historic are the other two that are all, oh, well, oh. all of them are $50 right now. All right, so what the $50 ones are. Ag conservation, conservation. diversity, Barbara Fire, Barbara Fire, oh. <laughs> EDC, yes. Ag Conservation, EDC diversity, Ag Conservation, diversity, EDC, veterans. No, veterans are not. That's the that is this the 50 to 75 range. So, what do we want to do with the 50 to 75? Mm -hmm. Move the 50 to 75 and leave the rest away. Uh, okay, so ag and conservation would go from 50 to 75, EDC and diversity would stay flat. Yep. That's what I would do. I'd like to see if we can break it into two tiers. So basically, the non land use, non financial. Well, okay. That was, so that the outliers with that are the police commission, CIP. And the voice. Veterans. That's my consensus too. Two tiers. And that's easy. And my All right. proposal would be take the 125 <laughs> that those the bar the larger ones are getting, move it to 150 for any meeting under two hours. Go to 225 for a meeting over two hours on those five meters. And then 125 for everyone else except EDC. Well, I think that's a little high for. I mean, I, I I like the idea for the majors as you as you call them. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think you know stepping like ag and conservation from 50 to 125 is warranted. Okay. <clears throat> You can be able to run the numbers on these. Like, if we move on to a couple of other things, can we come back with, with new numbers on that? If somebody gave, gave me what they actually wanted to see, that yeah, I, 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 <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna, gonna, we're gonna get to that. I'm on to the, I'm on to the next thing already <laughs> because I'm thinking, like, we have to we have to give a dollar certain budget, right, right? So, we need to we need to rerun those, right? All right, so. What did you call them? The majors. The majors. The majors. I was going to say the big leagues. <laughs> the, yes. the majors. Do we all? I, I like Charlie's tiered approach. Do, do we all agree that 150 for a two hour meeting and, and 225 for a meeting over two hours is for, for those boards, right? And those boards would be BOS, PDC, Wetlands, BOF, CBA. Yeah. The majors. Yeah. Uh, okay, so everybody else. <laughs> No. <laughs> Every, everybody else not in the majors. Um, what is the consensus there? So most of those right now are at 50. Mm, no, 50, no. 50, 75, 100. They're all over. That's about and 125. I'm, I would why not three tiers? Because some of those, like Alan said, are from $50 to 125 is kind of a big increase, and it's not really warranted. Hmm. 
All right, so we'll break down the remaining boards into your two tiers. I guess we'll call them the minors in the department. <laughs> 75 and 125? Yeah, but who's who's in oh, which? Um, I would say the, the 75 would be EDC, um, ag. Um, I would say diversity. Um, Conservation. Yes. Arts and culture, elderly, historical. Yep. AHRC fits right in the ball too. Yep. And what about veterans? I don't, yeah, I put them all there. You, you want to put veterans in that same tier? That's actually a cut. It's a cut for them. It's also a cut for American Heritage River, too. It is, but it's I think it's appropriate. Appropriate. There's no there's no difference in the level of minutes that they're doing with the rest of it. Mm -hmm. So do we want to include veterans in AHRC here? I do, and then, yeah. then you have two tiers. Um, no, CIP no. and police commission. And board of assessment appeals. CIP and police are 125 and board of assessment appeals is 100. So move BAA up to 125 and call them flat. So, C so CIP, police, and BAA will all be at 125. So we, we don't adjust that. We'll keep that status quo. Yeah, I think BAA should be in the majors because they, they're not. Yeah, but I mean, you if you think about it, they could also end up in court in those minutes. In fact, they often do. Fair enough. I'd make that argument. So do you want them to 150 and 225 then? Yeah. Okay. No. Yeah. For them. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, board of assessment of the board of assessment. I mean, we meet three times a year. Yeah. They often, I mean, they can, and they have recently been in the open court, so we want good minutes. Okay. All right, so so the majors would be BOS, PCC, Wetlands, BOF, CBA, BAA. That would be going from 125 to 150 for two hour meetings, 225 for any, any meeting over two hours. Okay, so now how, how do I get? So originally, Ruth said that 25% were more than three hours in her groupings. What do you mean? How do you? I don't understand. Well, she, she doesn't have a breakdown for a two hour meeting. Right. For the averages of two hour meetings. Like how many of her meetings are at two hours or less, and how many are two hours or more? She doesn't have that. Am breakdown. I doing 50 50? Split it. Mm -hmm. You need a number, right? Yeah. Okay. Nine and three. Okay. Or, or whatever that alternately, 18 and six, I guess. Okay. So you're still looking for 75 versus 25. Yeah. Okay. Um, so so those, those boards would go to the 150, 225 tier. CIP and police stay status quo at 125. EDC, Ag, Conservation, Diversity, Arts and Culture, Elderly, Historical Commission, AHRC, and Veterans are 100? Is that what we said? Yep, 75. 75? Yep. Did we or do we categorize Bravo 5? Or is that not our purview? It's not our purview. That's what I think. It's in their budget. Um, everybody good with that? I have a motion to accept that. So moved. Second. All in favor? Who is second? Sarah. Opposed? All right. Did you get the notes on that? Of course I did. All right. Okay. The next issue has to do with part time employees. Um, so, oh, should I do that? Should I say for that part? Yep, that's easier math, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, you might as well stick around. Right. Okay. Um, so, the, the next issue has to do with part time employees. Um, so, everybody knows that the minimum wage in Connecticut is on its steady progression up to $15 an hour. Um, the issue is that what's that causing? What that is causing is salary compression amongst part time employees, where there's not going to be that much difference between the summer camp counselor and somebody who, who works part-time in social services um, year round for us. So I wanted to flag it as an issue where 
you know, every time somebody at $15 an hour or $14 an hour gets a dollar a year increase, that's a seven and a half percent increase in, in their compensation. Um, so do we want to take a look at what we pay our part-time employees now, which is currently 1775 going 1812? The budget is 1811, I think. 1811. Yeah. Um, and that that relates to part-time employees who are currently going to be at 14 and then hit 15 in this fiscal year or just at, just at the end of this fiscal year. So do we want to address the rate that we pay the part-time employees who provide services for us on a year-round basis to recognize that that um, change in the minimum wage? So the part-time employees is, that's just the, so, the starting salary. I mean, most of them. No, no, no that's what they get. It's they all, get so it doesn't matter whether they've them. worked here 30 years or whether they've worked here five minutes. They all get the same hourly wage across every department. If you're a permanent part-time employee, you get the same dollar amount. I would like to see them, uh, to see the compensation adjusted for uh, part-time employees. Amy did the math, I'm trying to find the email part-time spreadsheet. So the, the total dollar amount is $275,000, but two big pieces are that, are Melissa's 84,000 in her summer house, which already has those raises in there because those are the kids that are getting boosted every year. And then it also has the emergency management stipend in it. So we're looking at $168,000 of money that is related to these people who make 1775 currently. So that's 9,287 hours. So if I do it at $20 an hour, that gets them to the total would go to 185, which is an increase of 17,558. And that, that's, that at least addresses the salary compression thing for the time being. And it also recognizes employees who really go above and beyond for us. I mean, it was largely on the backs of some of the some part-time employees that, that we were able to do, like the COVID vaccines. Um, they they deserve this. And it's been it's been a while that since this last time this was really looked at in a serious way. The, what is that, two dollars and eighty-eight cents an hour difference? That that uh, seems dollar, dollar eighty eight. That seems to be well worth the cost of um, consideration. I agree. I would say you would get to these comments and let you want to go for a long time. I think all positions need to have a set time to review for the question and everything else. Well, they, they typically do in the contract process, but the outliers there are people who are not in a contract. Um, so, anybody not like that idea? What about stepping it over two years? Step into what we're doing. Like that's status quo. So what's the total budget number, Amy? Um, 168,000. No, what's the budget change? So oh, 17,558. And we cut out 10 times that between the pension contributions and employee health care. Yep. But he's thinking like making them go to 19 and then to 20, right? Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, we're sort of like we how we bid off the pension. I don't think it's unreasonable. What if is the kids the, will go from 13 to 14 this August? So 1775 first in July. Um, I think it's August first this year. Oh. So it we, might be July. If we the next one goes to June, I think. It's it's August this year, and then it goes to June 30, okay. and that that lines it up with the fiscal year. Um, so if we stepped it from 1775 current year to 19, that's a seven percent um, change, which keeps that that keeps pace with um, the minimum wage increase. So 19 this year and 20 next year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. Yep. I will say I would rather do the 20 now, but. I'll, I'll meet you halfway and take what I can get. Um, want to make a motion? Uh, is it 19 even? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I make a motion that we um, give the part time hourly wage a, a, a lift to $19 this year and $20 next year. Is that? I'll put it. I'll second it. Made and seconded. But that doesn't need to give them a dollar raise. Yeah, it does. Yeah, they're going 17, from 1775 to 19. Like you said, their part-time is getting $18. Dollars Last year, it was 18 was 1811. Huh? It was budgeted for 1811. But currently, they're I missed the budget. Sorry. <laughs> okay. 
I don't agree, but you know, I'll support whatever the board decides. But I just think that we're going to have to come back midstream because I'm sure the minimum wage is going to go up again. Um, and then we're going to be right back there. Um, you know, um, and it's all, you know, at this point, well, if I was a part time employee, I would quit and have to be rehired, <laughs> you know, at some point, you know. Yeah, except our part time employees get the same wage. Yeah. If they quit and came back, it would be for the same dollar amount. Well, that's mm -hmm. Yep. And I, I just don't think seventeen thousand five hundred fifty eight dollars when they already saved one hundred and seventy nine thousand. You drop that down to hundred and fifty thousand <coughs> out of the budget. Any other comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Three to one. I think it's well deserved. I'm glad we're going to get to the 20. You know, we'd like to have done this sooner, but I'm glad we're going to get to it. Okay, Amy. Yes. Can you, how quickly can you run those numbers for us? Uh, no. <laughs> um, so we'll let's. Get come done, come by. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm going to now pull the budget back. Uh, Yes. Okay. Um, I believe. So what we're going to do now, let's let's table this, and have the Arts and Culture Commission um, do their thing because, as an added bonus, um, Slip and Nordell has some questions for the Arts and Culture Commission. Uh, so. We, I think that's the only budget we did not finalize. This is true. Mm -hmm. right. That's true. So, no let's... pressure. <laughs> <laughs> poor, the poor lady was already nervous. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's go on to agenda item 10A uh, discussion of the arts and culture projects with Debbie Williams. Stay back here, come up there. Wherever you would be most comfortable. <clears throat> I'm Debbie Williams, and I am the chair of the newly established Arts and Culture Committee here in East Windsor. <clears throat> um, and I'm here tonight to present you an idea for public art in East Windsor. Um, public art is very important. Um, first and foremost, it is there, um, it is available and it is accessible for everyone to enjoy. Um, it's beneficial to a community because it uh, promotes um, tourism. It could bring people into our town and that is good for the businesses. It fosters a sense of community um, pride. It fosters a community identity. Um, and also as I'm about to um, show you in the, the project that I'm gonna present, um, it can in aesthetically enhance an area and um, also add some character to a man-made structure. So a month ago, the Arts and Culture Committee met and they unanimously voted to move forward with a large mural in East Windsor. The proposed site is the 91 underpass on South Water Street um, by the river. So I'm here tonight to um, present the idea to you and ask you to vote to allow us to use that area for the mural. So now I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the project. Um, for the muralist, his name is Ben Keller. He is from Enfield. He has done murals all around Connecticut. He's very talented. His work is amazing and you would be lucky to have him. Um, a benefit to having a local muralist is that he knows most of the people that have tagged the wall that I'm talking about. And so they have kind of an understanding that when he paints his art on it, they won't come back and tag it again. Oh, wow. There's kind of like this understanding, this respect. So that's kind of cool. The theme would be um, the flora and fauna that is indigenous to the East Windsor area and the Connecticut River area. <clears throat> so I've been researching the birds and the fish and the trees and the animals. Um, and that made me think of Frank Zietzik, um, who is a local photographer. He's here in East Windsor and maybe some of you are familiar with his works on Facebook or his website. Um, he takes amazing pictures. And so I approached Frank and I asked if he would collaborate with Ben Keller and he agreed to. Um, and we would also 
um, compensate Frank for his collaboration. So that means that with this project, the Arts and Culture Committee would be supporting not just one local artist, but two. Um, <clears throat> the entire cost of the mural is approximately $20,000. Um, but we're not gonna ask the town for any money. We're gonna do our own fundraising, either through a GoFundMe page or um, <clears throat> We might be working with Sustainable CT because I met with somebody um, from there today and they're looking for a town to partner with to um, work on a project together, but we hadn't passed this forward yet. So um, I will talk to them again if you will to move forward with this project. Um, we will have a link that can be shared and shared and shared so anybody could contribute money to this project. We won't be relying solely on the residents of East Windsor to supply the entire $20,000. Um, <clears throat> oh, we also have um, a sponsor, sponsorship level. Um, we were gonna offer to local businesses or individuals if they want to. We haven't set the amount yet, but it would probably be around $500. So if they donated that amount, they would get um, recognized on our Facebook page, on Instagram, um, their logos or their name would be on any flyers that we put out there. If we did any press releases or had any media publicity around it, then they would get recognized there. Um, also, when the project was finished, we would put up a sign or a plaque and we would announce all of the sponsorship level donators. So it would be kind of like an ongoing um, publicity for them. The timeline for the mural would be once we raise the money, usually there's a deadline for raising the money, like three months after you start the project. Um, the mural itself will only take three weeks from start to finish. Um, and the last thing is I'm hoping that some of the high school students would be able to help with the project. I have a meeting with Superintendent Tudrin last week to talk to him about it, um, but they could earn community service either by cleaning up the area beforehand or maybe having an active hand in the mural itself. Um, so once again, I just want to say that we're not asking the town for anything except your approval to move forward with the site as a canvas for the mural. And the site is the overpass on the South underpass. The underpass. underpass. So the underpass. there's two sides of it. It's on both sides of the street. Um, each side is about 120 feet long, 18 feet high. One is a flat wall. The other is four wide concrete columns that encompass the same amount of space. That's just before. Um... The area where you guys work. Yeah. Um, there's a stream that goes to the left-hand side of the It's very close to um, the path at Volunteer Park, right. and also anybody visiting Osborne Fields would also see it. You're talking about the highway overpass, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the 91. All right. Um, we probably need to ask DOT's permission. Well, um, you're the first step. Once we get your signature, it goes to DOT. Okay. Oh, excellent. <laughs> well, they seem to be off to a great start. So let's talk about the, the project before us now, and then we'll give Charlie some time to have her poor Debbie with his uh, litany of questions. Um, so, as I understand it, you guys are going to privately fundraise it. You need acquiescence from us before you approach DOT about pursuing the project. Correct. Full stop. That's it. That's it. This is pretty easy. Yeah. And if we work with Sustainable CT, whom we are already affiliated with, um, they will match us dollar to dollar for every dollar that we fundraise. So we would only have to come up with 10,000 instead of 20. So if anybody were looking to make a motion, it would be to authorize the first selectman to sign a letter in support of the mural project put forward by the Arts and Culture Commission. If anyone were so inclined. I wanted to come from the I'm nearly out of it. I will move to authorize the first first selectman to. Um, I'm sorry, it was to um, approve the authorized, authorized the signature support. of the first selectman in um, a letter in support of the East Windsor South Water Street underpass mural for the as uh, presented by the Arts and Culture Commission. Is there a second? Second for discussion. 
Second for discussion, Slack and Nordell, the floor is yours. So why that location as opposed to like under, for instance, the, the Shell station along 91? Because we don't, that is a privately owned area and we don't have approval to put a mural there. We try to oh, put a mural, okay. mural there. Okay. We've been trying I, <laughs> for I'm months. I'm happy to provide more context of, about that offline. Okay. I just, we have this on. Yes. I just had a question on uh, under the traffic calling plan. It says the walls being paid are protected by a large sidewalk. I don't believe there's any sidewalks there. There's no sidewalks there. Okay. okay. So I don't know if that's. I'm the person who wrote it up didn't have, um, hasn't visited it himself. Oh, okay. Ben Keller has is familiar with it. And I've driven by it. I just sent pictures. That's okay. I just Matt didn't know we were planning on putting sidewalks in for us. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. One side is gravel. But there is, right. right. It's very gravel. protected on either side. Like there wouldn't be any like impediment to traffic right. because there's, you know, like right. we said, there's gravel before the wall. There's a great expanse before the wall. Right. And then there's also some space before the columns. So maybe that's what they were talking about. No, these these examples of pictures here that you gave, those are just examples of pictures, or are they, or do you know if those are actually done by the artist that you're referring to? Oh no, those are just examples. Like just examples. Mm -hmm. okay. But I like the idea that you're going to use some of Frank's pictures because doesn't he do amazing work? The other day, yeah. I'm going yeah. to have to have him give me that on the canvas. <laughs> And can I just say, so here's a little something I learned when I was doing the research. So did you know that there are things called champion trees? And champion trees are the largest of their volume, in volume of their species in the state. We have five of them here in East Windsor. So I thought it'd be cool to put those on the mural. What is, is that like an elm? What's a champion tree? So, well, it could be any tree. It's the largest oh. in volume oh. of its species in the state. I'm not sure I understand. We have a black spruce is one of them, right, in the so, bog? And we have um, a Manchurian maple. So that maple is the largest Manchurian maple in the state, and it's here in East Windsor. Do you know where? It was at some point. Do you know where? A weeping European ash, a dwarf eastern white pine, a southern Japanese hemlock, and a blue heart. And we have one um, co-champion tree, which means it's tied in volume with another tree in the state. Make sure the tree warden knows we're there. Too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually kind of hoping they weren't the park. They use it. I think you might want to take those trees and find out where their locations are. Too soon. Yeah. Too soon. Come down. I mean, because yeah. every source is out there cutting. <laughs> there are. It's Forty-seven going miles. <laughs> Any other questions or comments on the question before us? There's a motion and a second. Just um, you weren't here earlier when I made some comments, so I just wanted to commend you and the commission on really getting into it so quickly and doing your research. And you're so passionate, and it's it's really nice to see. So oh, keep it you. up. Thank you. There is a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries unanimously. Sorry for making you wait for so long. Don't go, don't go anywhere. How did you find out about those trees? I'm impressed that they did for 40 years. I didn't know we made There's a list online. Yeah, there's a list. I went on DEP. I thought our black spruce bog had a big black spruce in it. It's on that list, but maybe not. Yep. I'll be sending you all our GoFundMe link next week. 
Um, so in an unrelated matter, um, Charlie had some questions about your budget. You know, majority of them are already been answered now. So, all right. So now within your budget, you guys have, you had a proposal of 7,650, which is going to cut down to 4,000. Um, so what are those, what are we looking to do with that, with those funds since this project is not being funded? This was never in the proposed budget. Right. Um, and I don't have my information in front of me, but I believe um, there were two interactive murals that I was hoping to um, have installed, uh, meaning that people could go up and pretend to be part of the mural, you know, for a photo op. Mm -hmm. um, and I had several locations in mind for that, you know, pending permission from that building. Um, and then you have the wraps. We yeah. did have the traffic wraps. Unfortunately, I have since learned that the town owns none of the traffic boxes in East Windsor. Um, so we're unable I gave to. Her, I gave her the property, yeah. To decorate any of the traffic boxes in town. But then we kind of parlayed that into, since we already had permission from the Historical Society to use old pictures of East Windsor. Um, we thought about making them into flags and lining the streets with them. And then I approached cool. the diversity council because I also, you know, we're arts and culture. And I thought we could also um, celebrate the diversity in town with different flags from the different ethnic groupings in East Windsor. And so I approached the diversity council and she said, Anna said she already had some thing like that in mind. So we might collaborate with them on the flag project. What else did I have on there specifically? Do you remember? That's right. That's what I oh, gave oh, you that's what you gave me. Yeah. Oh, the visiting artist series. That would be somebody like um, Frank coming in and like teaching a class on photography. Or, you know, but, you know, we want to encompass all the arts. So if somebody can, you know, teach about pottery or photography or dance or spoken word. I mean, we want to, we want to do it all. Oh, and the postcards were the same, taking the um, old pictures of East Windsor, um, hotels, you know, old gas stations that people might recognize and then make postcards out of them and then sell them. So people could say, this is where I'm from. This is what it used to look like. Charlie, anything else? No. Um, that pretty much all, all the questions I have. And I have a thousand other ideas if you ever want to talk about. Okay. I know where to find. Okay. I have that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. No, no, it's fine. Thanks. Thanks very much, Doug. Good job. Sure. Thank you. We've not had to do that, so we'll continue to solve on. Um, in the packet, there is an application from a couple who is looking to do a graduation party for a college graduation. Um, they want to use the reservoir and they're asking us to waive the prohibition on alcoholic beverages. Um, it has been signed off on and approved by all of the relevant departments except for me. Um, so as we've done with others, it comes before us as the last stop. You guys get to review it and then say uh, whether we want to move forward or not. Just for clarification, when that uh, motion was originally made, that it was originally made for the new Well, what we what we made the motion that we made would pertain to the application that was in front of us. The town was the applicant, uh, and that was for the summer concert series. The ordinance um, puts a preclusion on the consumption of alcohol on town property unless waived by the board of select. Um, so we can good night, guys. Um, we can. Go further if we want. We can limit it to beer and wine. We can deny it. I just want to make sure we didn't limit it to beer and wine because I was under the impression we did. I'll check the just real quick. I think it's 90 dash one. Let's see. I don't think there was any regulation in there specifically. Huh? I don't think there was. You don't think there was? I'll just take it just a second. Uh, 
Wow, we have an ordinance on the books that goes back to 1935. <laughs> uh, it shall be unlawful to possess, consume, sell, or distribute alcoholic beverages of any kind on property owned or under control of the town of East Windsor without the express written consent of the Board of Selectmen of the town of East Windsor. Any person who violates any provisions of this ordinance will be fined not more than $100. So um, it's a, it is a complete and total ban unless we give somebody written permission to do so. Um, so I want to just do beer and wine. I'm fine with that. I, I, I don't have a I don't have a problem because you know with these up here wine people drinks or blended blenders or whatever they got there. Um, if somebody's going to be able to take on the use it, but it's wine and beer. And, um, but I just wanted to make sure that if we approve this, we weren't going against our own policies. And I didn't have a chance to do that. So, oh, it took me longer than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Would it took me way longer than that? Any other comments on the application? And it's before the park opens, so just park that mm -hmm. Okay. Approve, deny, amend. Make a motion. We approve the request for uh, exemption for alcoholic beverages made by Camp mm -hmm. McCann. There a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, that's your party? Yeah. <laughs> One of those uh, hundred drinks. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Enjoy it. Yes, it is. Okay, let's move on to. Okay, a couple of things on ARPA. Um, so when we did the race grant last year, um, we were operating under the interim final rule. Um, they have since approved a final rule, um, and there are a couple of updates that I wanted to share about that because we still have ARPA funds available that um, we're, we need to start talking about what to do with. Um, so. The only significant changes uh, in the ARPA final rule um, are that any uh, allocation from ARPA under $10 million is unrestricted. So previously under the interim final rule, there were five categories that the funding could be used for. It could be used for revenue recapture, hazard pay, tourism, sewer water broadband, household nonprofit, and uh, small business assistance. Um, I say those quickly because that's the only one I'll remember. If I go slow, I'll forget them. Um, but those are the only five permissions currently available. Now, there are, I say it's unrestricted under $10 million. It's unrestricted, but um, it, it cannot be used for um, tax relief. It cannot be used for um, paying down pension obligations. Those are the restrictions. Um, so we have effectively two points Well, in the in the in the bank, we have 2.4 million um, unaccounted for. We also last year um, talked about funding a portion of the project, uh, the water project of the School Hill Association, under the state revolving funds water uh, potable water program. 
they are making good progress. They're actually to the point where they're ready to start securing architecture and engineering work associated with that. But upon a review of the minutes, we never actually voted to commit that quarter of a million dollars. Um, so one of the things that I would like to do tonight is to formalize that um, so that we can dedicate that money. They can start drawing down against it and start doing the architecture and engineering work to move the project forward. Um, I've been meeting with them as have uh, Representative Foster, Senator Anwar, Glenn Norton, and uh, Connecticut Water to make sure that that project, oh, and DPH has been absolutely great uh, to work with. They have been really top notch in terms of stepping up. So um, they're at the point now where they actually need the money to start being able to do the work. So I'd like a motion to um, commit that quarter of a million dollars to them and to recommend that to the town meeting, which is another condition to change in the final. So that's thing one. You want to do thing one and then we'll move on to thing two? Um, yeah, I would. Are you guys all familiar with the School Hill Association? Well, I don't know about the School Hill Association, but I know about the water issue. Right. The School Hill Association is the School Hill Water Company, basically. And it's the 31 it's homes. The lane drive. The lane drive, the lane drive, and a small portion. I didn't know that was, I just why I wanted to clarify because I didn't know that's what that meant. But yeah, gotcha. so I have no problem with that. So there, there are uh, 31 homes and 87 yeah. residents that are affected by a failing community well. It's, they're failing because of nitrate concerns um, and hopefully because of PFAS concerns. Uh, and I say hopefully PFAS because if that were the case, a, a fair tranche of federal money is available for that specific issue, which may have a, a very positive outcome for those folks. Um, so I've actually, I, just today, I asked them for their water test to see if PFAS is an issue, which we're actually oddly hoping for. Um, so uh, we had committed 250000 for the School Hill Association back in April of last year, but we never voted on it. Um, so I'd like, I'd like to ask you guys for a vote and just forward that to a town meeting. I'll make a motion to fund $250,000 to the School Hill Association. Through uh, the town's ARPA. Um, and sent to the town for uh, town meeting. You want to specify it's coming out of ARPA now? Yes. Yeah. To come out of ARPA funding. You can do it. I'll second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, folks. Um, okay, so that's after that funding is committed, we still have somewhere around the ballpark of $2.1 million um, left uncommitted with that unrestricted caveat, mostly unrestricted caveat in place. So one of the things that Amy and I are working on that we'll be doing in the next couple of meetings, I'm aiming for the 17th, but I'm somewhat skeptical about having it done by then. Um, we're gonna we're gonna have a pretty serious conversation about. Uh, infrastructure needs in the community um, around bonding, ARPA funding, um, fund balance, you know, the resources that we have available and the needs that are that are in front of us. Um, but one of the things that I would like to do to kind of get a head start on um, committing the remaining ARPA dollars is actually survey the community with what their interests and needs are associated with that money. Ask, ask the, the taxpayers in town what their priorities are for the, the remaining two, two million or so dollars that we have to commit by the end of next year. Um, so that's that's kind of what I'm thinking in terms of the next step so that we get some community buy-in to decide where, where we ought to go. How, what would be your plan to reach the, the community? I have community outreach money in my budget. I actually yeah. would do a, a mailing, um, a survey mailing, okay. um, and we'll ask for uh, certain identifiable information like you know, name and address to make sure that we're getting one respondent per household and then my office would aggregate it. So we're just asking them or are we going to give them a list? I'm going to give them a list. Um, and what, what I would do is come back to you guys with a survey to look at um, ideally in two weeks to, so that you guys can, once I lay everything out on the table with what our, our infrastructure needs are, we can talk, talk about available projects. And if you have others that you want to add to that list, we can workshop that at the meeting on the 17th. That's my plan. Sounds like a good plan. Anybody not like that as a course of action? Great idea, Looking 
start hoping a lot of people will cover it out. Right. And I mean, for me, you say infrastructure, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, things are going to last us a long time, you know, that we no longer have to pay for that kind of stuff. So it'll be interesting to see what other people bring up. Well, it'll be part of that, you know, I have the PowerPoint started, it's just too rough to share right now. Um, but it, we are in a position now with the funding that we have available where we can make some meaningful investments in terms of, of what the town needs, um, or at least what I perceive the town needs, without asking the taxpayers here to pay more. It's a good time to have that conversation. Okay, um, so that gets to number three, which is a request from the um, police union for hazard pay. Um, this is an allowable expense under ARPA. Um, so what, what I'd like to do is actually include this as one of those items in the community survey to see if this is what the, the taxpayers in town wanna to commit the funding to. Hazard pay is limited to two, in two capacities. Um, it is limited to not more than a $13 an hour boost for any employee and not more than $25,000 in total per employee. That's what you're limited to in terms of hazard pay. What hazard pay is not limited to under the act is municipal employees. It's supposed to go to essential employees. And if you think back during the height of the pandemic, grocery store clerks, gas station attendants, bank tellers, dental hygienists, you know, those were all, they all fell under the essential categorization. So when we're talking about um, bonusing out frontline essential employees, we need to be thinking about it in, in the totality of what that term means under the law. So that would be one of the things that I would include in the survey. What? Nothing. <laughs> okay. Anybody have any comments on that as, as an overall strategy or an approach? Well, okay, you asked. But yeah, <laughs> come on. <laughs> yeah, so I, I guess I'm I'm not I'm not feeling like that's a good use of the money. Um, you know, I'm thinking if we can spend it on infrastructure, that's a long-term expense that, as you know, as everybody knows, we're so far behind on to catch that up. Is doing something for the whole town and allowing like everybody in this town a little breathing room. As well as you know, providing maybe a possibility, depending on how we spend it, you know, the ability to you know make uh, you know to invite more commercial development in this town. That's what, you know when you say infrastructure. That's what I'm looking for. And when look, we we see that kind of money, that could do a lot for us in, in that capacity to give people a one-time bonus. I'm not sure how that you know advances the town as a whole. I don't disagree with that at all. It, it's it is the definition of found money for it, and it's an opportunity for us to do something that we would not be able to do otherwise. My thought is let the let the taxpayers in town decide. You know, they're they're the ones ultimately who will be able to make the decision. So it, it'll help us in terms of guiding the pathway forward if we know where the sentiment from public response is. I agree, um, but to add to what you know, Alan's saying, I think going that route is just it, it opens the door to a broad uh, amount of people who might have their hand out saying, well, "Where's my share?" Mm -hmm. Okay, um, that said, I'm gonna to ask to postpone agenda item 10D. I have a, a motion to postpone that? I'll move to postpone um, item 10D under new business. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded. We're gonna go Charlie and Marie on that one. Alan's got a bunch tonight. Um, <laughs> all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Okay, so now we're going to move on. I am moat, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> Tax refunds. 
we'll move to approve the tax refunds totaling $1,268.04. Is there a second? Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So clear. Madam Treasurer, are you ready to go? I think so. All right. So before we go any further uh, on the budget, and we'll, we'll now return to uh, 9F, um, I just want to thank Amy um, for all of the work that she puts in to make this process as easy as it is. She and I spend quite a bit of time together in the winter months, and she's always very happy to, to provide an answer to whatever is a new question I come up with at the moment. Um, it's just, she's just an absolute delight to work with, and I appreciate the work you do. So this is now. So this now has all the changes we talked about. I had a couple more that you guys didn't talk about. So okay. like building committee was one of them. So if they had only 10 meetings scheduled, like um, ethics at $50 only had 10 meetings scheduled, I only left them at 10. Mm -hmm. So the 500 became 750s. Mm -hmm. But building, we didn't have anybody, but they were 100 dollars a meeting so i moved them to 125 to be consistent with the other three that stayed at 125 and where's ethics um ethics is in the very beginning that's just separate 50. that one just was only 10 meetings so we had a couple like ag was only 10 meetings um conservation was only 10 meetings so if they were 10 meetings at 50 dollars, i just left at 10 meetings and did 75 for your guys' request. So I didn't. So I didn't do 12 meetings for those people, but diversity and arts council, I did 12 because they appear to be meeting monthly. Yep. Yeah. So I did 12 at the 75 for those committees. Mm -hmm. So anything in yellow are the changes. So if we start at the very top, your reporting secretary. I ended up doing you have 35 meetings. You'll like so many more. You'll um, <laughs> so many more. <laughs> so you guys have 35 meetings scheduled. So I did 26 at the lower 150 and nine at the higher because that was the percentages that worked out. Yep. So that's your new number is 59.25. So now your selectman has a different number. So not just the ones that only have reporting secretaries, almost every line now has a different number. Okay, that's easy enough. Um, so, all right, so we'll go back and, and correct those for the record, uh, as long as the total at the bottom is the same. So you have the working draft now, you don't need my Excel sheet. Well, I did send it to you, but I didn't know if you could get your email from here. Oh, you sent it to me since you went to your office? Yeah, before I came back. But the okay, we'll square up in the morning and make sure we have we have everything where we need to be. Okay. So, any other changes other than the reporting secretary and the part time? I uh, know there's a few that didn't change though. Like um, we talked about police commission not changing. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's uh, oh, and the board of assessment appeals. She had gone from fifteen hundred to three thousand. So I did the math and that ended up being, I think they had six meetings last time, but that gave them 11 at the lower and six at the higher. So I did move it from 3,000. In assessment appeals? Yeah, yeah. I, I they see only that. need like four times a year. I think it's because- Because there's a rebound. This is a rebound, yeah. so they're expecting. So she's expecting more, yeah, they only, they only but, meet that but that still gives them 17 meetings and they've only had six last year. You gotta wonder how they came to 8, 840.22. Or 539.40. How are they getting cents in their actuals? Oh, I don't know. Perfect. All right. So the, the. Maybe at one time they paid an hourly because if you look at the last two years, $400 and $300, that tells me that they're now doing $100 per meeting. Where maybe before that they were doing something hourly. Mm. So the yellow reflects the changes that you made, the and the red is, is the part time. The pink, no, the yellow, whether it's part time or whether it's um, 
reporting secretary, I think they're all yellow. The pink are ones I didn't change. I see. So if I didn't change it, I left it pink. Uh, okay, so let's turn to the Arts and Culture Commission because we didn't vote on that yet. Mm -hmm. um, so Charlie, are you good with your program? Well, uh, let's actually take that up. The, you know, we're going to talk about the Arts and Culture Program slide. Their request was set at seven six fifty. I set it at four thousand. Can I have a motion to do something? First page, Charlie. Oh, the first. Yeah, last last one, Bob. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. I'll move to accept the arts and culture at four thousand nine hundred dollars. Second. Made and seconded. Any discussions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Now, with the only changes in here being the part time lines and the um, recording secretary lines, we'll go. Department by department, use the bottom lines because this, the handout that Amy gave us should now be correct with everything else accepted, which means that the, the total number on the last page is also correct. Yep. Before, before, we, before we ratify, <laughs> do we want to talk about revenues? I mean, we could. Let's you guys it. have to send a forward to the Board of Finance, but basically, what I did for revenues is I left everything the same because everything we got from the state said it was going to be the same, with the exception of our tax based on the mill rate is going up. Hmm, what did I do with that? Should be the revenue expense or revenue summary? Um, well, revenue, the re revenue, either one. The revenue summary would give you, oh, but you're not going to have the right dollars because it doesn't have the change for the dollars we just did. What in your new sheet? The one you emailed me? Oh, it should. Um, I have to do the revenues on the total dollars. So that leaves the Board of Ed at the superintendent's number right now. Mm -hmm. Because that's the way I have to do it to calculate the whole amount. So the value error. Uh oh. Yeah. Um, well, we can talk about the local. We can talk about the, the local revenue so so that it's state revenue local revenue and taxes yep so the tax number that's in here is just the 34 million 564 194 is the new grant list net that was filed as a 110 22 the 2021 filed grant list um, at 34.5 mils which is the current mill rate so that's what i have in here right now And then everything else I left the same. All the building permit at 250, but if you look other than last year, that was really high at 480. The building permits one year was 254, another year was 255. So I don't think the 250 is unreasonable, barring big projects. And everybody else, the revenue is pretty close to right on. And then the state revenue is all going to be the same. So we get six million three forty nine six fifty nine, and there's no change to that this year. Oh, here we go. I think I can fix your formula. Oh God. <laughs> he's going to fix your formula. <laughs> I'll apologize in advance. I just remember it's just a copy. That's right. You guys are all going to be sorry once I pull this off.
Mm. No, I cannot do it. <laughs> Do you want me to go see if I can? Yep. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to just close this so I don't accidentally keep it. Where is the error on the revenue page? Like where uh, it's yeah, the it's on the same revenue page and the revenue summary page. It has to do with the, the linked values. Okay. For us that are sitting here at a walk, I'm going to pick that up. That what? That oh, the thing told me it had a value error on itself. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. While she's away, let's transition on to our select agents. Um. After some delays, the town's FY 2021 audit has finally been completed. Um, the town auditor will be presenting his findings to the board of finance at a date still be determined, likely later this month. A key takeaway from the final audit will be that the board of education will return approximately $1.5 million in unexpected mon unexpended monies to the town's fund balance. This will again push us above 20% of reserves allowed under the town fund balance policy, um, which all points to a position of strong fiscal health for the town. On February 18th, I joined Representative Foster and Ellington First Select Woman Lori Spielman for a conversation with Commissioner Bouton about the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. This is another thing we'll, we'll talk about um, in a couple of weeks. Um, the, the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act is colloquially referred to as the Bipartisan Infrastructure Bill. Um, we talked about its applicability to potential projects in East Windsor. Commissioner Bouton was very gracious with his time and offered some key insights into how the law will be administered at the state level. It's important that the town maintain an ability to match any state or federal money uh, for certain projects through the Infrastructure Act, um, likely at a rate of an 80-20 cost share between the state and feds and the town. Um, the infrastructure bill can be used for things like roads, bridges, high-speed internet, electric vehicle infrastructure, and things like that. It is limited to hard infrastructure, um, so particularly around transportation. Um, on February 22nd, I had the opportunity to speak at the North Central Connecticut Chamber of Commerce's Economic Development Breakfast. Leaders from the four surrounding towns shared strategies and ideas about how to attract and retain businesses in our communities. I shared the work uh, that we've done through the Erase Grant, the small business engagement that, that is ongoing, enhancements that are being made to expedite our permitting processes, market studies, utilization of certain tax abatements, stakeholder tours, collaboration between boards and commissions, and a strong emphasis on customer service, as well as other, uh, some obvious, some less obvious strategies. The full presentation was included in tonight's Board of Selectmen agenda, and I'm happy to discuss those items further at any point if anyone would like to. Um, that same day, I was delighted to attend an event in the town of Summers, where they launched their own version of the E-Race Grant, their own small business and nonprofit assistance program. Um, it's emulated on our program and it's designed to aid businesses and nonprofits in their community. That is just one town of several that I'm aware of that are effectively taking the project that we did and, and adapting it to their own community, which shows that, that East Windsor did something really, really good for businesses and nonprofits in town and it's being emulated elsewhere. That, that, is, that is the highest form of flattery. Um, on February 24th, I met with the CIP committee chairman, Adam Meehan, to talk about community needs associated with bonded projects. And yesterday, we met with Dr. Tudrin about infrastructure needs for our school buildings. It's my intention to bring a synopsis and project options to the Board of Selectmen in the next meeting or two, with the intention of any potential projects being included on the November ballot to allow for the highest taxpayer input as possible. Later, um, later that same night, last Thursday, I had the opportunity to meet with East Windsor's own Mary Turner, uh, who is the first ever Miss Connecticut team volunteer. She's advocated for a cause near and dear to her own heart, which is animal cruelty. You can learn more about what she's advocating for at milosmission.org. The town continues to work with our legislators to help residents of the School Hill neighborhood navigate the state grant process to allow their failing community well to connect to the Connecticut Water Company. I want to extend a big thank you on behalf of the town of East Windsor to the East Windsor Athletic Club, 
who have donated cornhole boards to the East Windsor Housing Authority and to the Senior Center. I understand they'll, they'll be doing it to a couple other organizations in town. Um, and when they presented them at the Senior Center yesterday, they pointed out that they were using funds that they had received from the Erase Grant to do that. So that again shows the ripple effect and the, the beneficial uh, implications of that program. As you all saw tonight, we congratulated Joe Gillette for 19 years of service to the town on our Planning and Zoning Commission. He brought a level, a level of professional insight and leadership to many decisions that moved the town forward over two decades, and we do appreciate this service. This coming Saturday, the town will be offering a household hazardous waste collection event at the Department of Public Works. Um, the collection hours will be from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m., and this is open to town residents. More information can be found on the community calendar on the town's um, homepage. The town is now accepting donations for its prom dress hero drive. We're soliciting new or gently used prom dresses, purses, shoes, and jewelry until March 18th at social services. We're looking for local business uh, sponsors for the breakfast with the Easter Bunny, which will be held on April 9th at the Senior Center. And that event will be co-sponsored by the East Windsor Rotary Club. Sponsorships are $100 per business, and we're requesting that those be submitted by April 1st. Our annual limerick contest is underway. Actually, Debbie Williams could have spoken to this better than I can. Um, this year's theme is animals. Submissions must be received by Park and Rec by March 14th. There are prizes uh, available for the winners in each of a number of age groups. The Arts and Culture Commission is running a logo contest for each one of the residents ages 10 and up, with also a cash prize for the winner. More information about that can be found on their Facebook page. Park and Recreation is still looking for summer help uh, and will be paying at least $14 an hour this year. Uh, applications are available in my office or at the Parks and Recreation office. And lastly, um, over the next couple of months, you'll see Eversource or Asplin trucks out on town roads. Um, they're, they're doing, I'm going to say, an ambitious amount of tree maintenance um, <coughs> over the coming year, which hopefully will prevent long-term durational outages um, in the event of adverse weather. Um, there is, I do want to also commend the members of the Broadbrook Fire Department and the Warehouse Point Fire Department. Um, on two successive Sundays, they have had to respond to structure fires where families were displaced. Um, one was on South Main Street in Warehouse Point, a family of four um, East, Windsor, East Windsor Elementary and Middle School students. Um, you know, a, a mother, father, and two, two students were um, displaced from their home there. Um, and this past Sunday, there was a fire at uh, Mill Pond Village that displaced one family for probably a little while. Um, but nobody was hurt and everybody else was able to return um, the, the next, either that night or the next day. Um, I even saw uh, former Chief Most there. Uh, actually, I think you were, were you coordinating the trucks? Yes. Um, that was pretty cool to see. Um, I've got my physical info. <laughs> <laughs> Cer certainly, we don't want to see anybody having to do that, but it's nice to see the, the folks who volunteer in the fire service come out when, when the call goes out. Um, that's all I have. Great. I had one meeting um, that we may have talked to, and that's the words of the Water Pollution Control Authority. I'll send you a copy. Um, meeting on February 23rd, um, the receipt of the application from the East Windsor Historical Society was approved unanimously after um, the conceptual plans were reviewed by everyone. The regular meeting uh, was suspended for a public hearing from uh, public hearing for West River Farms, uh, LLC number 2224, West, West River Bend, uh, BP Property Management, LLC, and Five Boys, LLC, but no public participation either in person or uh, Zoom for the meeting. The facility connection charges were approved after coming out of the public hearing unanimously. And the highlights of the meeting was their budget. Um, and he also went over some of the um, internal things that they've accomplished, but you can do that on the um, website at the water portion. So that's all I have. Thank you, Madam. Slide the paper. Okay. Um, the Act Commission and Conservation Commission, I couldn't make you work. Um, planning and zoning, I made the first half hour before our, I had to leave it for our uh, budget workshop. They didn't really have anything of note to mention, so I'll, I'll just skip that. And last night I went to Wetlands, and probably the most notable thing um, there is that they, they had a public hearing and adopted the new uh, Wetlands map for the town of East Windsor. So it's a big update from what we were using before, which was just kind of a modernized version 
of the 1958 map. So this is actually a digital raster layered GIS map, which um, you know is quite a bit more accurate, and they'll be updating it um, further with the you know overlaying that with actual wetlands delineations from the applications over the last ten years. So um, and you know we could go back further than that if they got more funding in the future. So um, and then both planning and zoning and wetlands adopted. Uh, Daniel Danielle Miller as the wetlands agent and the CEO, um, respectively. Sarah. Okay, on February 23rd, I attended the Board of Education meeting. The board was joined by Dr. Michael Rafferty from Leading for Learning LLC for a literacy update. Um, he reviewed and provided the board with six recommendations to the Broadbrook Elementary School and East Windsor Middle School's literacy programs. The goal is to provide guidance for teachers to reach students, and the suggestions include updates to assessments and data protocols, phonics instruction, intervention programming, revisiting and um, revising the writing curriculum and a multi-year improvement approach. If the school district was to adopt some of these recommendations, implementation would be begin to take place in the fall. The board made an adjustment to this year's school calendar for high school students only, making March 29th a shortened day due to SATs. The board approved the 2022-2023 school calendar. Um, after doing much research as to when surrounding towns would be holding their April vacation, East Windsor decided to stick with the vast majority and hold April vacation from April 10th through the 14th of 2023. Um, beginning the next school year, kindergarten students will hold their first day of school on the same day as other grades to fulfill the 180 day school requirement that will now be required for kindergarten attendees. On February 28th, the state mandate regarding masks in schools came to an end, leaving the decisions to local school boards and superintendents. It has been determined that effective March 14th, Mask will be optional for students and staff in East Windsor Public School buildings. Um, the decision to wait until the 14th was to allow time for updating protocols and communicating them with staff, parents, and students. The board unanimously approved an, uh, approved an out of state field trip for the high school varsity baseball team to play a game at Double Day uh, Baseball Field and tour the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York. The board appointed Jennifer Syme to represent the town of East Windsor on the Rockville Regional Agricultural Education Consulting Committee. Um, on March 1st, I attended the Economic Development Commission meeting. The commission reviewed um, a rough draft to be addressed to area commercial realtors. The letter would be asking the realtor to share any commercial listings that they might have in town. Um, so we can, the town can um, promote the property in various avenues. Um, the commission would be interested in sending out 10 letters at a time. Um, and they plan on forwarding the letter to the first selectman for input for, before proceeding forward. Uh, more information is to follow on the date of the East Windsor Business and Government meet and greet which will be held here at Town Hall in this room. It will be a great opportunity to network with businesses here in town. Um, a few commissioners reflected on attending the North Central Chamber of Commerce Economic Development Breakfast that um, Jason already spoke about. And uh, the other items were already mentioned. So that's all I have. Like Nordell. Oh, before you do that. You talk about the um, 180 day requirement for, for kindergarten. What was it? What is it currently, or what was it? Um, I think they always started a week later. Um, I okay, so it's not a it's material the, Yeah, it, it's a fairly new. Um, there was a different requirement previously. Okay. Um, and now it's with all the other students 180 days. <laughs> Just thinking ahead. Thank you. No. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie. Okay, I don't have much. Um, the only thing I have is that um, PTO is doing a fundraiser for bus driver appreciation. They're selling yard signs for $10 a piece um, to 
you know, show bus driver appreciation for all our bus drivers who have done a phenomenal job this year. They had a lot of you know, difficulty during the COVID and kids, and they even had a couple of weather days that were quite difficult for them. Um, so, you know, every year PTO shows appreciation to the bus drivers, um, but this year they're doing something a little different by, you know, selling signs and the proceeds to that will go towards Bus Driver Appreciation Day, um, in which they present um, the bus drivers each with like a little goodie bag with essentials that they feel, you know, bus drivers need, like cleaning material, masks, um, <laughs> water, <laughs> um, snacks, and things of that sort. So. You can see uh, the Facebook page, PTO's page, Facebook page for mm -hmm. um, how you can order your own yard sign. And their next meeting for PTO is uh, next Thursday. So anyone who wants to attend can attend that as well. And that's all I have. Thank you. Okay, um, Madam Treasurer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I printed it for everybody. In case we have uh, technical difficulties, I didn't have any errors in mine that I sent. So I just sent them. Just send me a list, and I'll of course not already sent me some. My mom. Taking back up uh, discussion on the FY22-23 budget, we're now on to the revenue side. Want to walk us through this? Sure. So I gave you two different sheets. One summarizes the revenue and the expenditures, showing that right now um, they are 53,357,071. I don't know, there's something wrong in the expenditure side by a smidge, but $1,000. But they're, um, the second page shows the different um, amount that we were talking about. So there is a difference because this sheet populates the mill rate and tells you what you have to go to to be able to cover the budget as they are currently. So it backs into the number. So I gave you a number of 34 million for the taxes, and this one has a $35 million number. Um, but it boils down to with everything else staying the same, including the use of fund balance, which the Board of Finance decides. Um, we would need to go to 35.1 mills or 0.6 mills or 1.73% for to cover these expenditures. And that's that's assuming no changes by the Board of Finance to our budget, no changes by the Board of Finance to the Board of Education budget. Right, which is currently right now the expenditures are 3.58%. Offset, offset by the granular growth. Now the grandless growth is 4.08, right? Yes. Not too shabby. I gotta say, guys, that that is a heck of a good place for us to start the board of finance off. March 16th. What is what the board of Ed presents budget for finance? Yeah. That, that is a very time consuming document, and I cannot start it until the board of selectmen are finished with the budget because everything changes. Well, we could have been done. You know. Well, I, <laughs> I wasn't going to start it now, but I'm saying, like, I am going to start it tomorrow. <laughs> okay, so that's the revenue side. Any changes people want to uh, see made on the expenditure side? I'm good. So how are we going to handle doing these? Adjustments just, just gonna we're gonna go back through one time here. Yep. Um so Amy, yes, on the legal side sheet with your highlights on. Yeah. If you could turn to the second to last page, yep. That number is correct. 43, 357, 071. Yes. The 3.58%. Yes. Okay. 
And then on the last page, it's your 17, 189, 716 is correct? Yeah. And 2.78%? Yeah. Okay. That's your number. Exclusive of the board of mm -hmm. And I double checked and we took out the 820 and the added. All the other adjustments you I did, did all the other do. Adjustments. I did everything that we talked about. And I double checked it. Okay. Other than I forgot to highlight that I added the money to the hydrant. So I didn't know right. that. Sorry. That's all right. I saw it after, but I did change it. Yeah, I know you did. I double checked it. So basically, the budget went down $144,000 with the decreases to the pension and the health insurance offset by the increases in the recording secretaries and the part time. And a few other changes that we made. Okay. So, can I have a motion? To approve the selectman's budget of 288,939. To approve the selectman's budget at um, 288,939. There's a second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So before we go any further, so that, that one carries, but before we go any further, does anybody have any other comments or concerns on any department in the budget? Because what I'm going to do, so we can get through this in somewhat of a timely fashion, um, we're going to do a rapid fire approval. Um, so I'll just read off the, the total amounts in the department, ask for a motion second, and waive discussion. Um, so does anybody else have anything at all on, in any component of this that they want to talk about? No, thank you. I'll give you a. Charlie Marie, I'll give you guys a moment. No, I don't know. All right. Um, charter revision is flat, so we're not going to do that. Uh, ethics commission in amount of $750. Can I have a motion? So move. There a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Diversity council in the amount of $900. Can I have a motion? So move. Second. Made and seconded. Any discussion? Have we skipped the net? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Arts and Culture Commission in the amount of $4,900. May I have a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. You got this thing? I'm going to hand her this. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to do that. Board of Finance in the amount of uh, $54,225. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Eight and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So carried. Assessor in the amount of $211,903. Is there a motion? Mm -hmm. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So carried. Board of Assessment Appeals in the amount of $3,300. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Tax collector in the amount of $142,314. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So carried. Treasurer in the amount of $261,653. Is there a motion? Mm -hmm. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Capital Improvement Committee. In the amount of $750, is there a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Legal, in the amount of $280,000. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Activities and fees, in the amount of $124,814. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Information technology in the amount of $283,092. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Made by Alan? Second. Seconded by Marie. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So carried. Town clerk in the amount of $151,873. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So carried. 
registrars of voters in the amount of $72,889. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So carried. Planning in the amount of $284,253. Is there a motion? Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. That was Alan and Sarah Fish. Thank you. you going too fast? Nope. Planning and Zoning Commission in the amount of $5,250. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Zoning Board of Appeals in the amount of $2,150. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Property insurance in the amount of $185,000. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. In the amount of uh, inland wetlands in the amount of $2,325. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Veterans Commission in the amount of $900. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So carried. Agriculture Commission. In the amount of $750. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Conservation Commission in the amount of $750. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Uh, Marie Allen. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Economic Development Commission in the amount of $900. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Uh, three in favor, one opposed. So carried. Police Department, the amount of $3,924,264. Is there a motion? So moved. There's a second? Second. All, and, uh, all in favor? Aye. <laughs> opposed? So carried. Uh, police commission in the amount of $1,725. Is there a motion? So moved. There's a made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Emergency management in the amount of $41,048. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Building department in the amount of $176,471. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Communications in the amount of $21,982. Uh, uh, is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Public works in the amount of $1,157,386. Is there a motion? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So carried. Town properties in the amount of $1,194,443. Is there a motion? So moved. Uh, made by Alan, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Marie. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So carried. Road improvements in the amount of $430,000. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So carried. Building committee in the amount of $1,500. Is there a motion? Moved. Is there a second? Second. Uh, Alan and Charlie. Um, is uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Sanitation in the amount of $1,063,445. Second. Made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So carried. Sorry, you're, you're, yes, sir. I'm sorry. You're good. Sorry. Uh, senior services in the amount of two hundred fifty-six thousand forty-two dollars. So is, moved. Is there a second? Please? Made and seconded. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed? No. So carried. Elderly commission in the amount of seven hundred and fifty dollars. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Made and seconded. All in favor? Please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. So carried. Social services in the amount of one hundred and seventy-eight thousand three hundred and six dollars. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Libraries in the amount of $324,750. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Made and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Recreation in the amount of $333,579. Is there a motion? 
So moved. So moved. Uh, made and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. So carried. Historic Commission, in the amount of $750. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Made and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. So carried. Debt service in the amount of $1,128,133. Is there a motion? Moved. Second. Made and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. So carried. Capital improvement in the amount of $950,000. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Made and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. So carried. Employee benefits in the amount of $3,460,562. Is there a motion? So moved. Uh, made by Allen, seconded by Charlie. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. So carried. Contingency in the amount of $180,000. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? second? Made and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. So carried. That brings us to a recommendation for total town government in the amount of $17,189,716, an increase of 2.78%. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Made and seconded. Any discussion? Amy, you good? No, I'm doing the math that you shouldn't do. You know what I'm doing? I'm assuming you're backing up for the bed. No. No. 17189716. No, town properties don't look like town properties. Yeah. It doesn't work. It's not going out there. Huh? I messed up the same way you did. On my um, original, the handwritten copy, I have the final number 1194443. 1194443. Yeah, but if you total it up, it doesn't come up. Oh, okay. Well, it's, it's not much on this copy. Three calculators going on already. Yeah, and if I made the same mistake, it's three times. <laughs> So, you got it? I got it. Okay. All right. Then it's my mistake. The six times. I got it once. You want me to do it again? No, I believe you. Yes. Yeah, that's the right number. One, one, nine, four, 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 three. Second time. I did it five times and it's not coming. Is that your number? Yeah. So hold on a second. Nice. Is it? Oh no, I missed the top three. 
Thank yeah, you. 190, oh, 195. And that's what I'm that sorry. Um, any other comments or discussion on the budget total? We have a motion on the table for a town government budget in the amount of 17 million 189,716, a 2.78% spending increase. Any further comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm going to, I'm going to ask you. Okay. I knew you had to be right, but I had to figure it out for myself. If you know how I got it. <laughs> so the, the budget activity will commence March 16th. Yeah. But we're in pretty good shape to start things off. The board of finance is to let you guys not a whole lot to do. I know. I'm thinking that. Uh, okay. So I've got to find my agenda now. Public participation. This is the public's second opportunity to address the uh, board of selectmen. Is there anybody here present who would like to address the board? Mr. Lansner. Thank uh, you, Tom Lansner, 27 Laurel Circle. I just wanted to thank the whole board of selectmen for the bipartisan way you got us through the COVID situation. And you know, I'm worrying about a lot of infrastructure things, and I just see great plans ahead for us. Uh, I see a lot of controversy and infighting in some of our neighboring towns, both politically and otherwise. And I'm sort of watching the town I used to come from in Massachusetts, and they have a lot of negativity going on. So it just makes me thankful that we moved to this town because I just see a lot of great things ahead. So that's a compliment, I think, to all of you. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Don. Thank Any other comments from members of the public? Mr. Lowe, statement address. Hello, Mr. Roger. No, 44 minutes. So. <clears throat> I got a question about the town and the Broadbrook Mill. Are you still working with Hamilton on that? Is it a historic society? Still want that building? Is the town going to take over getting the uh, as this materials out of there for under a half a million dollars? Or is Hamilton still doing that? Um, Where does the town stand? So there, there are machinations moving on that topic. Um, I'll have an update for the board shortly. Um, the long and short of it is it's a privately held parcel. It's under a consent decree over the under, uh, under the oversight of EPA and DEEP. Um, there are the state historic preservation offices was called a consulting party, um, as is the town. Um, those conversations continue. There is no resolution at this point. They are approaching the point where remediation will commence. At the, the current iteration of that involves uh, Hamilton or Raytheon actually uh, performing the remedial work. Um, but the most of the answers to your questions are still questions. Um, those conversations are ongoing, but it, it just it's still ongoing. It's, it, it, the reality is it's not a dead issue. Then. The reality <laughs> is there is a private company um, with very deep resources that is pretty committed to an outcome and it's unclear who if anybody can move them off of that um i'll have, I'll have more you know when it's available i just would add to that and i forgot this in, in part of my uh, report that they the wetlands uh commission did approve a permit for them to start uh digging out a lot of that stuff um the first phase of it anyway so they're and they're looking to get started on that, you know, as soon as the weather permits, basically. Thank you. Other questions or comments from members of the public here in the room? How about online? Is there anybody online who would like to address the board? Seeing none, um, we will have an executive session. Uh, action is likely. Um, before adjournment, do we need to make a motion to set those new fee rates for recording secretaries? It's part of the budget, so that kind of is the policy document, but I'm, I'm happy to make a standalone motion if you'd like to do that. And does that mean board finance approval? Yes. Well, no, it won't be effective until 7 1. Right. Well, obviously. Yeah. Right. But do we so have what to make we would a formal do motion making that change is my point. What we would do, as I understand it, is we would include that in our budget recommendation as we have. If it's if it's included by the Board of Finance and approved by the voters, we would then do a motion for a payroll change effective July 1. Okay, I'm good with that. Yes. Sound good? 
Yep. That's the one we would be filling out for me for every employee. I know. There's a stack. <laughs> um, okay, so we will have an executive session. It, uh, it will include the five members of the Board of Selectmen and Melissa LaBelle. Um, could I have a motion to go into executive session? A motion to go into executive session. Second that. All in favor, please say aye. 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 We are in executive session at uh, 9.21 p.m. Action is likely afterwards, Peg, so I'll get the video up soon. So I had uh, sold this to Broadway Gardens. It's 10.31, we're out of executive session. Um, is there any further business to come before the board? I'd like to make a motion to uh, authorize the first selectman to sign the employment agreement between the town of East Windsor and Melissa Philadelphia. Is there a second? Second. Made by Alan, uh, seconded by everybody. Uh, we'll say Charlie. Um, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I will sign it tomorrow. Thank you for your support. Is there any further business to come before the Board of Selectmen? Will we adjourn? 10.32. Is there a second? Second. It's non-debatable. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. We are adjourned to 10.32. Thank you.